Hey guys, welcome just to a fun little video I've been wanting to create since, uh, well, I, I just kind of want to create this for fun. <laughs> now, I make no claims that I have a system to do a product review. This isn't really what it's meant to be. This is just sort of my two cents take on uh, why I wanted to get these critical thinking cards. Now, I've been watching this for a little while. I've been wanting to get it for a little while, actually probably for the better part of a year now. And anyway, I may have left a comment in the uh, comments saying that I would really like to get this as soon as I can get some employment that I can afford to justify something like this. So he sent me a message saying if I just send him basically my address that he would send a free deck of cards for me. Can't say no to that, can I? <laughs> so uh, Jesse from uh, the School of Thought, I thank you very much for doing that. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, so, anyway, the reason that I wanted this is it's uh, it's got three card games. Now, to be frank, I really don't know anything about the game itself. I haven't seen anything about the game or the rules or what that means. Uh, this is what this video is going to really be about. Um, the This is going to be more so on, uh, it's kind of like a test, if you will. Uh, I, I want to say I want to think of this as being like a... Um, you know how like when you're doing studying and you make study cards and whatnot? Well, this has 24 cognitive biases as well as 24 common human fallacies. And I believe that I probably know most of them pretty well. And I'm going to challenge myself with a little bit of a test to see how well I sort of do. This isn't really formal. This isn't really scientific. This is just for fun. So what I have here is I'm going to go through each one of these cards uh, rather quickly. I'm not going to explain much because I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rate myself. I'm going to, if I'm really, if I really think I know a lot about it, and this is kind of my opinion on it, if I think I know a lot about it, I'm going to give myself two points. If I'm aware of it, but maybe, maybe there's probably more that I think I should probably know about it, then I'm going to give myself one point. And if it's something that maybe I've only heard of, or maybe even completely unaware of, well, I'm going to get no points. <laughs> I can't give myself points for nothing. And, you know, the final score is not really going to mean much, but uh, I kind of, you know, for fun, want to see with this arbitrary way of measuring myself where I sort of stand. Anyway, I've got a background in dealing, and I've opened up a lot of card decks before, and I can tell you this is exactly that. So I can already tell you, without even looking at it, I do believe that this is going to be a... Uh, I need my scissors. <laughs> as, as I was saying, uh, I used to be a dealer and I used to open these things up all the time. Uh, but I had a uh, basically an ID card that I was able to use to kind of pry into these things and uh, make it easier. And uh, I really didn't think that far ahead in this instance. All right, so again, I'm just sort of looking at the, the coloring, and I think I could see the differences here. Uh, these are going to be game cards, call-out card. I'm just going to put these things uh, to the side for now. <laughs> and for all intent and purposes, what do I want to start with? Uh, uh... All it really says is your your fallacy is, your fallacy is, and your biases. You know what? I'm going to start with the biases, just for the sake of why not. All right, so first and foremost is the anchoring. Now, I'm not going to read them out. I'm just going to, pro I'm probably going to do a little, little read. I might as well read it for the first time myself. So your, the first card is your bias is anchoring. The first thing you judge influences the, your judgment. Oh, this is going to take a while if I read them all. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm on the fence of whether I want to read this or not. I think if I read it, like again, it'd be too long. So maybe I'm just going to go with anchoring. And I might have to take a little pause moment to kind of go, okay, is this what I think it is and, and whatnot. So off the top of my head, I'm definitely going to have to give myself a... Uh, I'm just going to do like a, like a, a point here. We'll, we'll add it up later. Uh, yeah, anchoring is uh, something that I learned quite well with uh, neuro-linguistic programming. All right, so the second card here is sunk cost fallacy. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I know, I know the business side of that through and through. Uh, 
available heuristics. You know what? I... I, I actually, I am quite aware of this. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, I think mostly because I know this affiliates with uh, other things rather readily. So I guess uh, what I'm saying is I'm sort of seeing it in the context and language of how they've created this. And I'm just got to get used to that, their language. And I want to try to make sure that I don't... Uh, don't think one thing to be another, and there may be some gray area overlapping on some things. But all in all, I think I have to give myself a point in, in being quite savvy on that one. Uh, cures of knowledge, or curse of knowledge. Oh yeah, I can already, things are already jumping to mind. Um, I, I don't even need to read that one. There's details on that one that I'm quite fluent on. There's actually other terms that I'm thinking that would also help that. Again, confirma confirmation bias is probably... Yeah, this is... <laughs> now, if, I, I really want to be clear, I'm not trying to make this look like I'm stacking this in one way. I really kind of want to make sure... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Dunning-Kruger effect. Uh, belief bias. See, again, I think they're using some words that are... Like, like, say, using the term bias, there could be various different kinds of biases that are very similar, but by definition, you could isolate them and give it another subset of definitions. And, like I said, I think this one actually fits in almost, almost as, a, as identically as a, a confirmation bias. Yeah, like, belief bias and confirmation bias are very similar. So that's another thing too, like, again, I'm going to give myself like the full point on that one. Uh, but there may be some differences by that might actually, maybe I should be putting that in aware. So this is where I I'm, I'm think I need to read the whole thing. And just to be clear, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't want to give myself the benefit of the, okay, you know what, just for the sake of like, whatever, we're just going to put a point here. That way, the, between the two, I kind of average in between. Even though I, I really believe I already know a lot about that. Uh, Self-serving biased. You believe your failures are due to external factors, yet you're personally responsible for your success. Many of us enjoy unearned privileges. Luck and matches. Yeah, you know what? I, I almost feel like I need a category right in between aware and savvy. I think one thing I should probably stipulate is Things that I'm savvy doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody were to just randomly ask me to define something that I would have a crystal clear definition of it, like right off the hop with examples in a sort of articulated way. I won't make any of those claims, but I know with a little bit of thought, I can really ramble on about it, a lot of things. Like, like I could write about it without having to use references. And if I were to use that as a notion, if I can write it without going back to reference it, that... I would have to say is a good thing to say it's biased or, or, or I'm savvy on. So yeah, self-serving bias. I, I want to, I'm going to give myself, I'm just going to say I'm going to wear that. I think I'm more than aware of that, but uh, the backfire, effect. Uh, the backfire effect, I would probably call it something a little bit. Uh, what I know what this means <laughs> well, again, is, I, I think um, I have to give myself hey, a group think, I don't even have that. to read that. Yeah, uh, you know what? This is something that I know I'm guilty of. It's in a, in a, like a form of conditioning. Um, I'm going to give myself one point for this, effect. even though I think I actually like someone on how attractive they are. I'm actually probably a lot more savvy on that. I'm not going to touch the board, whatever. Easily be in the savvy. from that too much. I'm too much of a critical thinker, but I know a lot of people that like they deserve it. It's throwing me off a little bit. In group bias. Yeah, group biases, that's an easy uh, the placebo one. effect, yep. uh, follow other <laughs> bystander people. effect, yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't even have to think. Or I know I'm, I'm actually well, probably a one. strong sufferer of this. Uh, I'm looking pretty savvy at this stuff. <laughs> Spotlight effect, yeah. You overestimate, yep. That that's part of something else that I read there. Um, yeah, like it, yeah. Again, you give a lot of attention to somebody and. Yeah, it, it's it's actually a good thing. You can use the spotlight effect uh, for positive reasons and negative reasons. Uh, if when you criticize or condemn people, they start to believe that themselves that they are that. But if you all, but you can also use it as a tool to support them. If you like something that somebody does and you want to see them do better at it, you give them the compliment. You give them that 
you know, reassurance, if you will, and they'll do more of it. And in fact, even if they're not all that good at it, just saying that they are good at it is enough for them to usually motivate them to get even better at that still yet. <laughs> all right, so we're kind of like in the halfway point of this here. Uh, Again, I could probably, roughly think, I could probably knock two points probably pretty easily in the savvy. Um, the two, again, I, 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 yeah. This isn't scientific, but uh, based off of what I'm seeing here, I am uh, liking, I'm liking my, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's, yeah, just for display purposes. <laughs> All right, so we're into the second part of this, and this is the fallacies. I left this one for last, just because linguistically speaking, I want to say I'm probably going to suffer worse on this. But again, we'll see. Okay, so this one here is the straw man. Misrepresenting someone's argument to make it easier to attack. Yes, that is very, very, yes. I have to give myself a savvy point for that. Uh, primarily, mainly because I know, uh, I see it in a lot of people that don't know a lot about the subject. Let's say you get somebody that, um, maybe they're hearing something for the first time, and they're unsure of it, and maybe they, okay, let's even say they, they disagree with it completely, uh, but they don't really have anything to really back up why they disagree with it. And so what they end up doing is they look at the, uh, this is like shooting the messenger, they look at the messenger and they try to find something in them that they can attack. In fact, this is social media in a nutshell. This, this is like, this is social media. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just leave a little, space here just to kind of show like we're on, I don't know <laughs> uh, false cause presuming that a real or perceived relationship between things means that one is the cause of the other um, actually yes I, I do know about this um, ironically enough IQ tests have uh, put a, a nice emphasis on on this uh, issue uh, because people tend to associate you know, uh, there's a um, blah, blah, blah. There's a terminology that is n not at the top of my mind right now that uh, would explain that really well, but I do know it. Appeal to emotion. You know, I am familiar with this. Um, I know that it's more of a manipulation tactic than anything, and... I've still got no unaware. The <laughs> fallacy fallacy. I like this card because of... Wow, that, that actually is going to get me thinking. I'm going to be sleeping on that one. Uh, slippery slope. I'm aware of it, but I don't think about it too often. Can't say I'm perfectly savvy, but I'm more than a, just aware of it. I just probably need to... Uh, attacking more. your opponent's character or personal traits in an attempt to undermine their argument. Dare I say, it's it's um, it's it's dumb people. It's how they argue. They're, they're not using facts. They're not, they're not creating a good debate. They're just going after somebody personally to... Essentially to insult them. I, I actually, I've actually created a uh, insult versus feedback thing for that on Facebook. And I use that quite a bit when somebody, when somebody insults me online and I don't really want to continue. I don't want to, you know, I'll just post that picture and just let it be. <laughs> uh, avoiding having to engage with criticism by turning it back on the accuser, answering criticism with criticism. Um, again, that just goes into the, the nature of when people argue. And again, it's it's really two sides attacking each other, and they're no longer talking about the thing that they're wanting to. You know, like married couples do it all the time. Uh, personal incredulously, incred, incredulently, incredibly, incredibly, blah, blah blah blah. Okay, yeah, like I said, it's probably good enough reason for me just leaving in, in the aware. I'm aware of it. I, I need Special to be more aware of it. I think pleading. Moving the goalpost to create exceptions when a claim is shown to be uh, false. There's a little bit of difference to that. I don't know. There, there, there's some differences. There, I, I get where what they're getting at, but I'm also probably sidetracked That's a little bit in the court of law or whatever. When you get arrested, they say, you know, say nothing. You have the right to remain ah, silent. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm going to put this in the awareness, even though... Like, again, is, there should be, like, a middle column here. <laughs> this is something that I see on... on uh, on social media all the time where people will it's tricky it's really tricky um because again it's not that i don't know it it's just that uh this is the first one i'm going to take off the board this is the first one i'm going to go back the on. world it's almost like you got to bullshit your way through success <laughs> and if you don't bullshit you're not going the very gambler's far. faculty the bandwagon again i don't think i need to sit there and explain uh, that appeal one. to authority 
Wow, we're just banging three off right off. Like I said about the IQ test earlier, uh, it's it's associating things with I, things. I gotta and... actually put that into the uh, the unaware. I um, there's nothing coming to mind. Black even... or white? Yeah, 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 yeah. When things Definitely are one that I will want yeah. to think more about. There's some some uh, contextual examples that I see. You know, once upon a time we believed the certain things because of certain evidence at the time. Um, sort of disprove an old theory. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a, it's like a... Um, Appeal to nature. Making the argument that because something is natural, it is therefore valid, justified, and then inevitable good or uh, ideal. Anecdotal. Yeah, it's basically like using one good example of something that is true, and then trying to apply that in another situation without necessarily looking at all the other details in the other situation. The full points, because the points matter. <laughs> The Texas sharp that is even something I am guilty of, and that's why I spend a lot of time looking at both sides of the fence. And the last but not least is the middle ground, saying that a compromise or a middle point between two extremes is the truth. That is certainly true. Um, if you study negotiations and uh, like like hostage situations or even like big business whatever, the middle ground is not the best solution and i think that's a really common problem that we have in much of the world if you will is that you think the like you start high and and you you kind of like get to the middle and then that should be the the end all of that if you will or that that is the as they say here the truth or the best solution i like to look at this as like it's a win 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 solution usually in negotiations if you're to simplify it there's like one party versus another party trying to find a middle ground or a common ground that they can agree on to move forward with but they forget that there's other external factors and when you look at the entire picture of all these variables if you can go through the process and look at okay what are the problems that need to be solved and try to figure out a solution that actually solves all these problems you'll find that it's not a middle ground solution at all it becomes an entirely excuse me different um thing all of in itself <laughs> All right, so we're at the end of this, and let's just do some quick math here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. 78 out of 96, and even though that really doesn't mean anything, even though I could probably justify half of this being over here and it being a lot higher, um, my two cents, my opinion on this is, uh, and I'm pretty, pretty, you know, feel pretty good about this, is that uh, I know this really, really well. Uh, there's certainly areas in here where I'd like to see myself become more familiar. And overall, more importantly, I want to see if I can use this more in my life as a tool in um, trying to address certain circumstances. Now, mind you, I have to bridge the gap in diplomacy because, again, I don't want to insult anybody or put anybody down or, or, or whatever. Um, but I think in terms of making an argument, these are really, really good... Uh, tools, sorry, to, to have a debate with. Um, and also to be aware of myself. Because as you probably know, as I've gone through some of these things, some of like, yeah, guilty, you know. <laughs> um, and that's something that I, like, again, I, I ramble on to the sun about all the other information and, you know, where I, where I learned all this stuff. And more specifically, why and how I try to apply as much of it as I can into the real world. I mean, what's the point of learning something if you don't use it, right? And psychology is something that has been essentially at the forefront of what my interests are in because, uh, well, everything on everything that we do is human interaction. And the better that we can communicate and interact with the limitations that we have, yada, 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 it's just better for... It's better if more people know more about how we communicate than we don't. <laughs> the problem with our world is we don't learn this in school we don't learn this outside of school you know it's basically we have the most sophisticated computer this is like the most sophisticated thing that we're aware of in the internet is our brains it comes with no manual on how to use it and we go through our lives kind of willy-nilly hoping that <coughs> things just sort of work out all right, so I just want to wrap this up and just say that um, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. I'm going to dig into this a little bit more. Um, there is a card game uh, to this. And again, I have no idea what the rules are. 
I, I, I don't know if it's a multiplayer game or not. I, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, whether I do another future video on this, probably not. But um, yeah, I hope, uh, you know, this is probably a little longer than I thought it was going to be. I hope I've edited down to a nice little whatever. But if you've got this far, you enjoyed watching it, great. <laughs> Otherwise, I, uh, I kind of had fun sort of putting this together. Other than that, have yourself a good one. <laughs>